Hello, my name is Trevor, and today we're going to be diving back into Tasha's Cauldron of Everything as we take a look at the Wildfire Druid. So get ready to burn your enemies to the ground today on Rolling with Advantage. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at all of the features and traits that we get for being a Circle of Wildfire Druid. Then we're going to go in and I'm going to give you a sample build and some ideas on how to play it uh, and some things you can do to combo off some of the spells and abilities that we get for being a Circle of Wildfire Druid. Now, with all Druids, we don't actually choose our Circle form until level 2. Uh, at that point, once we pick that, there's a couple of things we get. And there's there's of all the abilities we get, the biggest, most iconic of the abilities we're going to get is going to be at second level 4. Uh, this subclass. The first thing we do is we get our circle spells. This is going to allow us to cast all of the flame spells that we need that are going to be, you know, indicative of this subclass. You know, the whole idea of this is, is the druid, that the fire druid, the, the rejuvenation of the woods, uh, through, uh, the burning it down and then rebirth. And we see that right here through burning hands, but we also get cure wounds as a, as a, as a, as a circle spell. We get access to flaming spear, scorching ray, plant growth, revivify, which is very good. R of Life, Fire Shield, Flame Strike, and then finally Mass Cure Wounds. So you'll see here we see you know both Fire and Rejuvenation, which is kind of the key. If you're if you're trying to find a theme for the character, uh, how to role play it, that is how it kind of gives us our first clue of what to t take a look at. Uh, the second thing that we do get is we get Summon Wildfire Spirit. Um, so this is going to be a pet class. We're going to be able to use our, uh, instead of wild shaping into an animal, we're going to use our wild shape to summon a wildfire spirit, a small little elemental. There's a lot of, um, of variants of how you can make your wildfire spirit look, uh, which I think is pretty cool. They kind of give us creative license, say, hey, what is this thing going to look like? Uh, but the cool thing is that when we spend an action, we expend our wild shape use. We, we, this thing pops up 30 feet away from you. And it says that each creature within 10 feet of the spirit, other than you, when it appears, must succeed on a deck saving throw versus your spell DC or take 2d6 fire damage. So it is going to take your turn to bring this out in the first round of combat, but it is immediately doing fire damage, which I think is very, very cool. Like it's like an explosion of this thing coming out and immediately dealing some damage. So that's good. Now, the spirit is friendly to you and your companions. It obeys your commands. And the way that we've gotten to see how pets kind of work now that Talishes is out is that it goes on the same initiative count as you. It just goes directly after your turn. So as long as you have a bonus action available, you can actually then use your bonus action to give it uh, another action to do after your turn. So the way this works is you're going to spend an action, you're going to summon the wildfire spirit, then you're going to use your bonus action to say, hey spirit, I want you to cast flame speed, uh, flame seed on your turn. If you don't do that, then all it does is take a dodge action on its turn. So I like the idea that I can bring this up and immediately have it attack. So we can front load a lot of damage early. We can summon it and it immediately, you know, do its little flame seed attack, which does, you know, a D6 plus your proficiency bonus and fire damage. Uh, or it could also use its fiery teleportation ability, which I really think if you're going to be playing, uh, this, this, this subclass, the fiery teleportation of the wildfire spirit is the ability I would build the entire character around because the way this thing is worded is very interesting. What it says is the spirit and each willing creature of your choice within five feet of it teleport up to 15 feet to unoccupied space that you can see. Uh, then each creature within five feet of the space that the spirit left must make, uh, succeed a deck saving throw or take more fire damage. So think of it this way. So first round, we summon the wild spirit uh, into a group of goblins. Uh, they all have to take, you know, uh, a save immediately to take the fire damage from it being summoned. Then as a bonus action on your turn, you tell it to do fiery teleportation. So then immediately after your turn, the wildfire spirit then teleports away from the goblins doing another explosion to see if they take more damage. If you look at all of that, they're going to be taking a save for 2d6 fire damage when it's summoned, and another d6 uh, plus your proficiency bonus fire damage when it leaves. That's a lot of just boom fire damage coming out. It's really good if you have a target-rich environment. Uh, and now once you have the wildfire spirit up, it stays around for an hour. So at this point, you can you know continue the rest of the combat or maybe even to the next combat with this thing already being out uh, now. After that, at level 6, we get Enhanced Bond. 
What this allows us to do is uh, when you cast a spell that deals fire damage or restores hit points, as long as the wildfire spirit is summoned, you roll a d8 and you gain bonus damage uh, or, or healing uh, off of that spell. So basically what this allows us to do is we cast a spell, and then if it's fire damage, we deal an extra d8. If it's healing, we, we heal for an extra d8. That's very, very cool. In addition, when you cast a spell with a range other than self, the spell can originate from the wildfire spirit. Now, the thing that's interesting is the wildfire spirit actually has a fly speed. So whenever you're casting spells such as burning hands or something else, it's like a conal attack, a lot of times that spell may be hard to deliver and hit as many targets as possible because of where you have to be in order for that spell to trigger. Now, if we can actually have the wildfire spirit flying above and shooting down, that's a lot easier to to deliver cone attacks. It's one of those things, the more you play on battle mats and the more you play like on a virtual tabletop, you'll find that cone spells can be a lot of can be hard to hit everything that's exactly you want um, without hitting friendlies or something of that nature. But if you're able to fly and shoot down, it actually is a lot easier to hit the targets that you want. So that's actually very, very, very good. So at sixth level, uh, what we see here is that the Wildfire Spirit kind of becomes a, a, a battery supercharging your spells, and it also can deliver your spells as well, which is very, very cool. Now, at 10th level, we get Cauterizing Claims. Now, this is a very interesting ability. What this allows you to do is whenever something dies, uh, you know, small or large, or dies within 30 feet of you, or your Wildfire Spirit, there's like this little spectral flame that pops up, and anyone who walks over that um, you can use your reaction to either heal them for 2d10 uh, damage plus your wisdom modifier or deal 2d10 plus uh, your wisdom modifier and damage. Now, the thing that's interesting is all of a sudden we have this mechanic where this thing pops up where if someone gets hurt and say, like, oh, you want to get healed, you're going to have to run over there and grab it and pick up you know, the, the healing uh, off the ground. That is something we see in video games. Um, you know, that's, that's like a mechanic of like, hey, something fell off a guy, you got to go pick it up. I think it's interesting that we're kind of bringing that to the tabletop space. I think it's a fun mechanic. Now, the thing that I do have an issue with this is that in order for it to be offensive, you have to get uh, someone to follow and like run over that. So you're either going to have to kite them and hope they run over it, or you also have to have your friends know this thing is up and say, hey, can you use your crusher feet to move somebody onto the flame? Can you use you know, the invocation on your on your Eldritch Blast for the Warlock to push their target onto it. So there's some Wombo Combo things you can do with your party members to kind of get them to say, hey, this Spectral Flame is up. If you want to push someone on there and get a bunch of extra fire damage, we can. Pretty cool. Now, the 14th level ability that we get is called Blazing Revival. Now, this is an ability that will not go often, uh, but when it does go off, not only is it going to save you, it could save the party. What this does is, is that as long as you have your wildfire spirit up and it's within 120 feet of you, if you go down to zero and go unconscious, if you, if you drop in combat, then you can cause the spirit instead to drop to hit to zero and you, uh, immediately get half your hit points back. Now, you can only use this once per long rest, but think of it this way. You're also dealing damage. You're also the healer. If the party wipes, you know, God forbid something terrible happens, you have this free get out of jail free card to come back up. My prediction on this ability is that it will not come up often. However, when it does, it could save not just you, but the party. So I think it is a very, very cool ability. I also really like the flavor of this. It's kind of the rebirth of the Phoenix, uh, you know, being reborn into flame. I really, really like the, the, the thematic ability of this. And I also think in really, really tough fights, you could do some really cool stuff with this. You could also, if you know that you've got it, you could act extremely aggressive uh, with, you know, how you want to play this character and placing your, you know, some of your spells if you know that if you drop, you can come right back up. So you could almost play him almost suicidal there at the beginning <laughs> once you have this ability up knowing, hey, I've got to get out of jail free card. All right, so that's what we've got for uh, the Wildfire Druid. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a sample build of uh, something that I think would be pretty thematic to play. So for the sample build for a Circle of Wildfire Druid today, what I'd like to do is take a look at building him as an Eladrin. I like the idea that the Eladrin gets Misty Step, and I can kind of double down on the whole idea of dancing around the battlefield with teleportation off of my Wildfire Spirit and Misty Step off of the Eladrin to make sure that I'm as mobile as possible. Think of it as almost like a Nightcrawler uh, Fire build. 
gold. We'll take it. So what we're basically going to do is come down here and and for the Tasha's Origin Manager, we are going to be using this to move the stat allocations around for the race to get the stats that kind of fit better with what we're trying to do. So what I want to do is I want to take uh, Wisdom to be plus two. And also down here, I'm going to change it to where I'm getting plus one to Dexterity. So it's kind of swapping it around a little bit, but this is kind of what I want to have for my Druid. Now, we get all the same Elven things we normally get, you know, Dark Vision, the Fey Ancestry. We also get Keen Senses to give us proficiency in Perception. Uh, but the big thing we get is the phase step. So what this allows us to do is a bonus action, you know, once per short or long rest, I can actually use this to, to kind of close the gap or to get away if I need to. And I want to play the summer version of it to where, uh, whenever I use my phase step, uh, each creature of your choice that you can see within five feet of you takes fire damage equal to your charisma modifier. So we need a little bit of charisma, but we don't have to go crazy with it. Uh, just think of this as extra damage to kind of add to the flavor of what we're trying to pull today. Now, for the actual class itself, we're going to be looking at a level 10 version of it. Uh, we're going to be going straight Circle of Wildfire Druid. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is take a look at the abilities. I am going to be using Point Buy. Um, I don't feel that we need strength in this build, so that'll be my dump stat. We're going to put a 13 in Dexterity. I will get plus 1 for using the Origin Manager to get that up to 14. I'll get a 12 in Constitution, 10 in Intelligence. Uh, Wisdom is going to start at 15, but I do get the plus 2 in Origin Manager for the Eladrin to get that up to 17, and then we will have a Charisma of 14. So this is how I'm going to build this out of the gate for my Circle of Wildfire Druid. For proficiencies, uh, we're going to pick Survival and Animal Handling. We have really high Wisdom, and I always believe, hey, let's, let's get prof skill proficiencies in the attributes we're really good in, and both of these queue off of Wisdom. Uh, now, we've already talked about what we get for being a Circle of Wildfire Druid, but the big choice that we have is at 4th level. Now, for the Ability Score Improvement, I'm going to choose Fey Touched Wisdom. This is going to get my Wisdom at this point up to an 18. It also is going to give me another way to cast Misty Step. And I know some of you are saying, wow, you've got way too many uses, this is redundant. This is the theme of the character. I always want to be able to be Misty Stepping. Always. So always be Misty Stepping. <laughs> and then uh, we do get an extra spell. Now, I chose Hex here for my choice. You could choose Hunter's Mark. You could choose a lot of different things. I like Command a lot as well. Um, these are just all options. Um, but I like the idea of Hex to kind of line up some of those big fire spells. It'll be fun. Uh, also, for 8th level, we're going to choose the Ability Score Improvement to get our Wisdom from 18 to 20. And then this is what this character looks like at level 10. Now, the big choice here is spells, because he is a straight spellcaster. So these are the spells that I like. I like Control Flames. I like Create Bonfire, Guidance, Thorn Whip is fun. In my games, I let people use this as a hook shot. Um, but these are, these are flex. You could choose what you want. I think Guidance is kind of an automatic pick. Um, I love Absorb Elements, and I can't recommend this high enough this has saved a number of characters in my games you just never know when you want to as a reaction take half damage from a big you know uh, incoming uh, attack particularly when you're dealing with dragons i think absorb elements is huge burning hands is going to be kind of one of our go-to spells early for damage um, we do get cure wounds i like charm person there's a lot of fun that you can do with entangle with burning hands as well you know lock them down keep them in place and burn them to death Sounds like fun. Uh, Fog Cloud. Now, Healing Word. Now, Healing Word, I think, is an auto-pick, but this is something to think about. At 6th level, we get the ability to add a D8 to uh, a healing or a fire spell that we deal. So, if you add a D8 healing to Healing Word, it's like casting a 3rd level Healing Word. That is very, very powerful. So, I think Healing Word is a great spell because it's a bonus action. I think it's amazing in this particular subclass. So, Definitely take Healing Word. Um, I also like Healing Spirit if you need mass healing in a pinch. Um, because it's just consistent healing over and over and over. So I really, really like Healing Spirit. I think Heat Metal kind of stays thematic with what you're going to do. You just never know how you want to burn your opponent. So you want lots of options. Um, we like Summon Fey. And I also think that... Um, you know, Lesser Restoration is one of those spells I always like to have on as well. You just never know when you need to, you know, fix this uh, issue for one of your party members. So it's a good spell to have. All right. So that's the spells that I picked here for fire. Uh, for as far as we talked about ability, we talked about the description. I want to have Far Traveler. I picked Insight and Persuasion. Again, I'm trying to play to my strengths of having high uh, wisdom and I have a little bit of charisma. So 
persuasion is good. Uh, for equipment, I always pick standard fare on my builds. You know, depending on what magic items you get, it could be different. So here's what the build looks like at 10th level. Uh, as you can see, we have solid skills. Um, I like the fact that we get a 16 armor is pretty good without any type of magic armor at all. Uh, but these are all solid abilities. Now remember, you're still a druid, so you still could wild shape and do other things. But I like the idea that what Tasha's has given us is the ability to play druids differently than just the moon druids. We can finally say, okay, this is an actual blaster build. This is someone who can sit back and, and, and be Trogdor the Burninator and just burn everything to the ground. I think that's a lot of fun. And I think there's a fun thematic way to play this if you, if you're mixing the idea of fire and the rejuvenation of the forest. I think this would be a lot of fun to roleplay. I think having this many ways to teleport around the battlefield and just in, in roleplay situations I think is great. I would always be looking for ways and, and creative abilities to use my, my Misty Step abilities. So I really like um, the idea of this character being able to stay away, burn things to the ground. You have a pet delivering a lot of your fire damage. I think this is a lot of fun. So if you have played a Wildfire Druid, I would love to hear your feedback. You can join our Discord. I'll put it down in the link below. Um, you could also uh, leave some comments below, and I'd love to be able to kind of debate, you know, how are you playing this? You know, do you like my choices? Do you not like it? Pick it apart. This is not a definitive, this is the way to play it. This is the start of the conversation. I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this. I am also interested in talking to people. If you have played a Booming Blade version of this, uh, while this class cannot get Booming Blade on its own, you could take feats to get it or, or multi-class. I think this interesting idea of mechanic where you could uh, Booming Blade someone and then use your pet to, to teleport away from them to help trigger Booming Blade. So if you have played a version of that, I'd like to hear from you as well. So until next time, let's keep rolling with advantage. Thanks a lot. Bye.